Our next guest is one of our most distinguished actresses. For six years, she starred as Xena, warrior princess, in the sci-fi fantasy series of the same name. And that is a while back now. We know she works very hard for Starship, uh, but what else has she been doing? A rare interview at home with Lucy Lawless. <laughs> Heard any jokes lately? Oh, just one about... Shoes? What kind of shoes do frogs wear? What kind of shoes do frogs wear? Open-toed sandals. Yeah. I, that, all my jokes have to be good for five-year-olds, yeah, you know? That's right, that's exactly. Um, so, yes, no, the, the, and of course, Lucy, we look different because of the hair. Yes. We've gone blonde. Yes, in Hollywood, they try to have a 20-minute conversation with you about your hair, and I just can't oblige. Mm. Though I will tell you that um, eight months ago, when the guy first did it, I sat in his chair in Beverly Hills and wept. <laughs> because he, I had gone in a housewife and he made me look so glamorous when I saw it at the end. I was <laughs> absolutely in tears. Um, and he said that was the highlight of his Hollywood career. Doing Xena's hair? No, Lu no, Lucy. I was just, truly, I was somebody, some girl from the valley. He knew I used to play Xena, but they don't, they don't care about uh, what anybody uh, used to do. Mm. Six years he did Xena. Hard work. Was hard work. Physically, mentally hard work. Mm. Yeah. Emotionally hard work. Because you, um, I, I think I took on too much um, the role of having to be cheerleader. Because my husband was the executive producer. I wanted everybody. I, I think I felt like it was my responsibility to keep everybody. You know. Mm. To keep the set jolly. I don't know whether I needed to be that or not, but I um, think I took that on a little bit more than was um, strictly necessary. Did that create problems in, in your relationship with your husband? Uh, I a mean, bit. Yeah. A bit. I mean, you were doing some amazing location work. Wouldn't you want to cross yeah. out at Piha once? Many in, times. In the freezing cold? Freezing up on the cross. Cold. And he's late. Yes. Yeah. Thrown like in the depths of winter. Because they'd write these scenes in Hollywood when it was warm, and they'd write these scenes about us. She falls down the abyss into a race, raging river. So they would build an abyss out Massey, and they would have great big turbines going, um, props from big, uh, you know, outboard engines to create this churning, crazy waterfall rapids action. And we would, they wanted me to fall backwards 20 feet down into the water, and I was so exhausted I went, all right, you bastards, film this. <laughs> and I just did it. I did 20 feedbacks because I was, I couldn't even fight them anymore. I couldn't express my um, rage. So coming home together in the evening, that would have caused some discussion? Having had to do all that? Uh, some, sometimes I think some I swallowed down and because I understand. The thing that I really love and respect about the man I'm married to is that none of this is personal. This is all about creating the best possible moment. It's all about the story. And I like that about him more than I dislike the fact he makes me do it. You know? <laughs> it um, there's nobody who has ever loved me better than this person, than Rob. So... Um, no, th there were times I did have to go and talk to a shrink about it, though. <laughs> Especially when I thought it was going to go on a seventh year. And I was having these dreams of, like, I would have fantasies of just driving into the oncoming traffic on the Har Harbour Bridge or something. Do you ever remember that? Before there were Before dividers, the when I was a kid, mm. we would drive over going up to Kaitai to visit Grandma. And I would wonder how my dad could keep it so steady between the lines. Anyway, I think that's where the genesis of that thought was but I would have these kind of awful fantasies. You always wanted to be an actress, yes? Yeah. Always? Mm. You know, I remember where that first thought came from was watching um, I was the ad breaks and um, and I, heard, I noticed that that was somebody's voice, so. So you must have a good ear. Do have a good ear. Yeah, because your creation of that American accent was Flawless. Flawless. Flawless, flawless. Yes, it was. Yeah, I had a good ear, but I had also an adventurous spirit. And the idea of spending four more years at school was anathema to me. At uh, university school? American school? Same old, same. Yeah. That's when you did your OE with 
Yes. Yes, I ran off overseas. Yes. Didn't you end up in a gold mine somewhere in Australia? I did. I failed. See, I thought we'd run out of money in Europe. My boyfriend followed me over. We ran out of money and we thought we really want to make a trip through Russia and Scandinavia. Let's go to Kalgoorlie and get a job to earn the money to go through Russia and Scandinavia. So we ping pong back. What do they do in Kalgoorlie? There's nothing to do but f**k, Paul. Pardon? So we did. And I got pregnant. In between the f***ing, though. <laughs> there was no let up. It was relentless. But didn't you <laughs> pick some minerals up? What do they, when they're not f***ing in Kalgoorlie, what are they picking up out of the ground? <laughs> Just relentless. Um, no, what we did was um, we worked for geologists and mm. would run for miles and miles and miles through the outback in order uh, to. with <laughs> maps and <laughs> yes. stopping periodically. <laughs> Um, I lived out in the outback, and actually it was kind of cool. We were only there for ten months, but it was long enough <laughs> to, get <laughs> to get a bun in the oven. Yeah. <laughs> Came back to New Zealand to have the baby, yeah. and and, um, and it was a great thing. She's now nearly 18, has a green mohawk, and is off at film school. She's a wonderful person. Anyway, and your health. the other stuff, yes, <laughs> the, <laughs> the other stuff going on during Xena, which we didn't really appreciate in New Zealand, I think, is that you were becoming hugely famous in the United States. Was that another kind of pressure developing? No, because I just, I think I thought that was just natural part of the course, took that for granted. Also huge in places like Turkey, Turkey. Iran. Iran, you bet. Pretty, you know, much, <clears throat> Zena was much more uh, widely liked in Australia than New Zealand, because I think we were still embarrassed about our own and oh it has an American accent anyway and whatever but um but a lot of good Kiwi spirit went into making that show. When did you start to realize it was really taking off in Turkey, in Iran, in the I mean was it well, a those came slowly. Um but no it was really about the eighth episode we were filming when we realized it had um had a bit of a life of its own because the lesbian community seized on the show instantly. And we thought that was really funny, Renee and I, who incidentally is still my very great friend and is about to have a baby. Um, uh, we thought that was really funny because we never saw that coming. But I think the producers uh, saw it coming and um, just thought it was terrific. And they really, I have to say the gay community, I really have always thanked them for uh, making it kind of hip and, you know, starting the chatter. When you say the lesbian community, do you mean the American lesbian community? What about uh, the, the Iranian lesbian community? Are they lesbians? <laughs> They're in undercover. Oh, yes. All of them. That's right. In Turkey, not so much undercover, the lesbians, probably. Mm -mm, no, I don't know. Couldn't, couldn't comment. Mm -mm. Mind you, what goes on in the harem stays in the harem. <laughs>